Utoff's phenomenon. What is it? Why does it occur? And what can we do about it? So to summarize, Utoff's phenomenon is a temporary worsening of neurological symptoms due to rise in body temperature, such as hot weather, exercise, illness, or even taking a hot shower or a bath. It was discovered by Professor Utoff, Professor Wilhelm Utoff, who's a professor of ophthalmology from the late 19th century. And just to give an example of it, let's say that you have optic neuritis, inflammation of the right optic nerve, but it improves, you recover, and your vision is nearly normal 20-20 or maybe with subtle deficits. Even years later, you may experience a phenomenon where when you exercise, you get temporary worsening of the symptoms. You notice that central vision loss, that central scotoma, or just decreased visual acuity overall. But then as you rest and cool down over several hours, the symptom goes away. That's known as Utoff's phenomenon. And it can really affect any neurological symptoms. Some people, if they're exercising on a hot day, their leg may start dragging and then it may recover. Some people can get numbness. Some people can get imbalance, double vision. And sometimes even subtle symptoms like cognitive impairment, cognitive fogging, or fatigue. All of these are examples of Utoff's phenomenon. And to see a very dramatic example, there's actually an elite runner named Kyla Montgomery who actually has multiple sclerosis from age 15 and experienced this phenomenon while racing. And I'll show a brief clip from her TED Talk just so you can see her perspective. So whenever my body overheats while running, I lose all feeling in my legs, which means more often than not, I'm running without any feeling in my legs. I knew that it would be really difficult, but instead of using this symptom as a barrier to keep me from reaching my goals, I used it to push me towards state titles and a collegiate career at Lipscomb University. So instead of being defeated by MS, I used it to motivate me. Now, Kyla is a very good runner. She ran 17 minutes and 22 seconds for a 5-kilometer race, which is over 3 miles at 5 minutes 35 seconds per mile. Just to you know, compare that to myself, for instance, when I was reasonably fit when I was younger, I ran 22 minutes, which, and I don't even have lesions in my spinal cord. So that was a very impressive time, and I presume that the reason that she was able to run that is because most of the injury to her spinal cord was in the back of the spinal cord, the sensory area. But anyway, she's quite an impressive athlete, and I've seen similar examples many, many times. Now, why does this occur? Well, normally, physiologically, a rise in temperature actually increases conduction through the peripheral nervous system. And we think that may be why, for instance, sprinters perform slightly better at higher temperatures. However, it's been demonstrated in physiologic tests that increased temperature can impair the amplitude of nerve conduction. And we think what's going on, and this is really based on autopsy studies, that when there is injury to the myelin, the myelin can repair, but it may still be slightly abnormal. People have demonstrated that recovered or remyelinated myelin may be thinner than normal. The normal gaps between the myelin, known as nodes of Ranvier, may be closer together than normal. And because of this, they may be more sensitive to physiologic stress, such as an increase in body temperature. Now, Utoff's phenomenon is most associated with multiple sclerosis, but it can really occur with any condition causing loss of myelin, such as transverse myelitis or optic neuritis, which can occur with multiple sclerosis, but sometimes on their own or with other autoimmune diseases of the nervous system. Anyways, there was one study, for example, on visual evoke potentials which is a test where we show like a checkerboard pattern into the eyes, and then we record with an electrode in the occipital lobe, and we can tell what the conduction is like from the optic nerve to the occipital lobe. And it's been demonstrated that in people with prior optic neuritis, even if they recovered, there's a decrease in amplitude of that signal with increasing body temperature, more so than controls. And so that's sort of a physiologic correlate of Utoff's phenomenon. And it's been demonstrated with other nerve conduction studies like motor fibers and sensory fibers as well. Historically, doctors actually used to try to diagnose multiple sclerosis by putting patients in a hot bath and then examining them afterwards to see if there was a change in their neurological exam. Needless to say, this is not as accurate as more modern testing, such as with MRI scans or spinal fluid, so it's not really done. 
anymore. Also, it was believed by neurologists in the past that heat was bad for MS, and they advised their patients not to exercise, not to go out in hot temperatures, for example. But it looks like this was actually, generally speaking, bad advice. For instance, we know that exercise is actually good for multiple sclerosis, that people with MS who exercise actually tend to do better on average. Also, we don't really think that temperature worsens multiple sclerosis in the long run. It may temporarily worsen symptoms, but we don't really think it changes the prognosis. In fact, we know that the risk of multiple sclerosis is greater in areas that are colder and further from the equator. And we think this has to do with sunlight exposure and vitamin D. And if you want to see my video on that topic, I'll go ahead and post up a card. So generally speaking, I personally would not advise someone against exercise or against being exposed to heat, including going into a jacuzzi, as long as they can tolerate it. But in some people, the symptoms can be so profound that they really cannot tolerate it. I have patients, they simply cannot take a warm bath. And I had a patient that used to live in Arizona, but actually moved to Los Angeles, which is where I work, just to get away from the very, very hot summers. Now, there may be some safety concerns in some people. Obviously, if you're a power lifter and you're doing deadlifts of 500 pounds and you experience weakness due to Utah's phenomenon, that could be dangerous. Uh, so you may want to take some precaution there. I did find one case report of a woman who actually, with multiple sclerosis, who actually died of hyperthermia with her head above water in a hot bath. But this is highly unusual, and maybe something else was going on in this specific instance. And I really wouldn't generally advise that someone not take a hot bath, as long as you can tolerate it. You may want to have your hand close to the drain, just in case. So what can you do about Utah's phenomenon? Well, a lot of it is behavioral. People try to avoid exercising in the heat. Some people try to do things like wear a cooling vest while exercising, and I'll put some links in the description to cooling vests that you can buy. The MS Association of America will actually give you a free cooling vest if you meet certain economic qualifications, and I'll include the link to the uh, application below. Some people have tried Tylenol, 325 milligrams prior to exercise. Obviously, this is if there's no other reason not to take Tylenol. That can work in some people. People choose forms of exercise, such as swimming, where your body temperature stays cool. Some exercise physiologists say that the ideal temperature to do hydrotherapy is about 27 to 29 degrees Celsius. That seems to be the optimal temperature. Some people at lower temperatures experience other symptoms, such as spasticity. So that's sort of the optimal range. Uh, people have tried different things, such as you know, using more air conditioning. And you may be able to get a discount on your air conditioning if you fill out an application called the Medical Baseline Allowance. And I'll include a link to some of the forms that I use in Southern California. But you may have to use different resources if you live somewhere else, obviously. But just so you can see, what you're looking for is called Medical Baseline Allowance. One other thing that I should mention is that some people have used the drug for aminopyridine. The trade name is Ampira, although it's now generic. And this is normally used for walking speed in multiple sclerosis because it inhibits potassium channels and is supposed to increase conduction through a demyelinated nerve fiber. But even though it's not FDA approved for this, some people have anecdotally reported that it could help with UTOF's phenomenon possibly by prolonging the action potential. I wouldn't normally recommend it for this, but I've definitely had a few patients report that they can perform a little bit better in the heat taking this medication. Anyways, I hope this video was useful to you. If you have any questions or requests for future videos, please post in the comments below.